I really could have stayed here even without speaking all evening, listening to everyone and their reflections on Bobby and, and to the cultural performances. The truth is this is that Bobby's death struck me very hard. My heart aches and a drowsy numbness pains my sense as though of hemlock I had drunk. Bobby was my dear friend and comrade. I loved him very much. The love I had for him was a never fixed mark that looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is important that we remember the story of Bobby Clark and we have to urge a very serious historian or political scientist to write a full-length biography of Robert Bobby Clark. Someone who has lived such a long life and has participated in many of the phenomenal changes in participated in one form or another, but certainly as an eyewitness and an air witness, and he made known his views. We must have this properly analyzed. And what we hear tonight is just the preliminary first draft of Bobby Clark. I think there are profound lessons to learn from him and his contribution for the further upliftment and ennoblement of our Caribbean civilization. Bobby is in a long tradition of very distinguished warriors for freedom and development and for independence and sovereignty and for non-interference and non-intervention in our internal affairs, for the building of social solidarity, for peace, security, and prosperity for all peoples. And that line, his Ancestral sources in our region come from Toussaint Louverture, to Marcus Garvey, to Wickham and Payne, and to all our great leaders and those the more recent time from the 1960s, those who are committed, who have been committed, who were committed, and those who are still alive who are committed to social change, or socialism, or advanced social democracy. Bobby, as David has said, one of several of us from the 1960s onwards. Because Bobby was 14 years older than Ralph. And before I met Bobby, I knew him. I didn't just know of him, I knew him. So when I met him, 
it is as though I had always known him. There was a commonality and camaraderie and a friendship which was immediate and deep. And David is correct, there are many fallen comrades led a particular path on the left. Socialism, social democracy, anti-imperialism, Caribbean unity, the linkage between the civilization of Africa and the Caribbean and the Caribbean and Latin America. And Bobby would have wanted us to mention his fallen comrades, those who predecease him. His dear friend and brother, his comrade Morris Bishop, Tim Hector, Rosie Douglas, George Odlum, Walter Rodney, Fidel, Chavez. It is not just true to say that I am the last of the Mohicans because there are a lot of youngsters, a lot of young people. And they're here, many of them are here, who are following in that particular tradition. Bobby and all of us of that period appreciated something very fundamental to life, living, and production. And this is something simply called time. We are all time. Yet only the future is ours to desecrate. The present is the past. And the past, largely our father's mischiefs. I see the Billy smile, but I could say our parents' mischiefs. I don't want to pour it all on the men's mischiefs. But the important thing, we are all time. Only the future is ours to desecrate. The present is the past. We cannot live in the past. We have to use the past to understand this present, which at the very moment is the past, because we have to put ourselves together to address the only, the only aspect of time which we can desecrate is the future. So it is about an avoidance of the desecration of our future. And how we avoid that, honest people can disagree. And this is why Bobby, in all his controversies, was entirely devoid of malice. He knew that those who differed with him were not his enemies, that at some time within the seascape and landscape of our small countries, there are matters with which we'd have to work together.